Tableau allows you to connect to almost any file or database and create valuable and actionable insights right away. Tableau's drag and drop functionalities make it easy to create impactful dashboards and tell meaningful visual stories. Tableau has set the golden standard for BI tools, allowing users to analyze data without the need of IT intervention. Tableau is by far the most advanced software for creating visual dashboards. And what makes Tableau unique is the quality of data visualizations and self-service analytics. Financial analysts will revel in their newfound ability to create complex and engaging charts like this candlestick chart. Or even this interactive beta scatter that shows the relationship between several stocks and the market returns. It's no wonder Tableau is the market leader in data visualization. And I highly recommend that you start learning the fundamentals of this incredible tool. Power BI lets you present and visualize data into interactive reports. For example, I can click on quarter two here to get a more detailed view of the sales within that time period. If I dive down here, I can see the weeks within that quarter and within the year. I can look at my store view and create different visualizations to summarize where the sales in my business are coming from. All of these visuals again are interactive. So if I filter to the clothing department over here, and then I can dive down and see the groups and product groups within that department. Then I can create ranked lists to show me with conditional formatting, which are the best and worst performers in my business. Power BI is the most accessible data visualization platform. It even includes all the functionality you get from Power Query in Excel and allows you to create complex analyses using a formula language called DAX, which will be very familiar to those of you using Excel. Two key differences with DAX are that you can create variables within formulas, which helps you avoid nested if statements and ensures that your formulas remain clear and concise. The other game changing feature is that we can use time intelligence functions like same period last year to instantly calculate the value of a metric in a previous period. By combining these features with the ability to make a data model with your data, Power BI really is an industry leader in business intelligence capabilities. The business leader. Now that our visualization specialist has created our dashboards, they're ready for our business users to consume. Business leaders are the main audience of business intelligence reports and dashboards. They are also key to guiding our data and analysis strategy. The main role of business leaders is to make decisions that either maintain or change a course of action. But there's one other role that business leaders must play to help the BI team work effectively. Leaders must prioritize communication with their BI team asking questions that highlight the priorities of the business. Questions should engage thought and should, where possible, avoid being transactional. What does that mean? Let's look at an example. A bad example of a question is, could you run the sales and inventory report for me for September? That tells the BI team nothing about why the question is being asked or what is important to that business leader. A better example of a question might be, our warehousing costs are too high. I need to understand which products have the lowest turnover rate. Now the BI team really understand the priorities of the business and can make a better decision as to which data is going to answer that question most effectively. So only by being transparent about business goals and priorities, can the BI team really deliver meaningful reports that guide the business in the right way. In all this discussion of business intelligence, transforming and analyzing data, there's one thing we haven't discussed. Where is the data stored in the first place? How did it get there? And who manages that process? This is where data engineers come in. Data engineers source, organize, and move data between database systems. They can also be involved in decisions about data storage and infrastructure. The majority of a data engineer's job falls into the category of ETL. Instead of moving data between files and Excel workbooks, 
engineers focus on moving data between database systems. They automate this process as much as possible using what we call data feeds. The next task is to create data warehouses, which store all of the relevant data that the business might require. It's typically stored in a format that's optimized for analysis and is beneficial because now all of the data we need can be found in one place. It's important that engineers develop an exceptional knowledge of the data systems they're working with. Engineers understand exactly how the data is structured, which helps them work with analysts to prevent issues down the line. Finally, engineers must look after data governance. This means ensuring the security of data as it passes between systems. Secondly, this means ensuring data integrity, for example, making sure that data is not duplicated. A key question that arises at this point is, why would we want to move data between systems in the first place? To answer that, we need to look at the types of database storage systems. At a basic level, we have two types of database systems. Some are optimized for transactional computing, whilst others are optimized for analysis by humans. At one end, we have what's known as an OLTP database, which is optimized for entering, modifying, deleting, and reading data. That's the type of database you'd be interacting with if you logged into your online banking. You want to enter transactions or see a list of your transactions. At the other end of the spectrum, we have a data warehouse, which combines data from multiple sources and is optimized for analysis. Instead of asking what my latest 10 transactions are, I now want to know by what percentage my monthly outgoings have increased compared to the same period last year. That's a very different kind of question. Now where a data warehouse would typically contain all the information that a business would require, a data mart is simply a small data warehouse used for a specific project or team. The last type of storage you should know about is a data lake which stores raw data in its original format. It can store both structured data, like tables and lists, as well as unstructured data, like emails and phone conversations. Now, since the data warehouse is the one we'll be working with most often in BI, we're going to cover that one in a little more detail in the next video. At a basic level, we have two types of database systems. Some are optimized for transactional computing, whilst others are optimized for analysis by humans. At one end, we have what's known as an OLTP database, which is optimized for entering, modifying, deleting, and reading data. That's the type of database you'd be interacting with if you logged into your online banking. You want to enter transactions or see a list of your transactions. At the other end of the spectrum, we have a data warehouse, which combines data from multiple sources and is optimized for analysis. Instead of asking what my latest 10 transactions are, I now want to know by what percentage my monthly outgoings have increased compared to the same period last year. That's a very different kind of question. Now where a data warehouse would typically contain all the information that a business would require, a data mart is simply a small data warehouse used for a specific project or team. The last type of storage you should know about is a data lake, which stores raw data in its original format. It can store both structured data, like tables and lists, as well as unstructured data, like emails and phone conversations. Now, since the data warehouse is the one we'll be working with most often in BI, we're going to cover that one in a little more detail in the next video. Let's look at a very simple example of how a data warehouse might be useful. Imagine we have a table of transactions which is stored in a database. We also have a product table stored in a different database which helps identify those product IDs. And finally, we have a category table that's actually stored in an Excel file. By creating a data warehouse, we can pull all this information into one place. Again, we have that transaction table, which now has a direct relationship to our product table. 
and notice that the product table now combines both the original product table and the category table. So there's two key benefits that this data warehouse brings. First, it combines and links data from different sources in one accessible database. Second, its data is now organized by semantic groups that bring together related data into simple tables. Here we have the product table, which is a semantic grouping of everything related to products. When we're doing analysis, it's probably simpler for us to look up a product category in the same table as a product name, and that organization makes our analysis simpler. 